Hey up Woodlanders, I'm here today in sunny Osgothorpe. I had a nightmare trying to deal with it. <coughs> I came across this huge piece of what looks like some sort of granite local stone. We're all right, <coughs> got it done. I'll post two and a half foot deep. And we've just got some finishing touches to do now. That little job all finished. Turned out really well in the end once it got past that granite in the hole. Anyway, on to the next one, which I think is go up the woodland. I've got a bag up a load of charcoal for Michael. He runs the Rub Me Tender barbecue, American style barbecue smoking and that sort of thing. I don't even know how to describe it. Sorry, Michael, I'm making a right dog's dinner of that. And it's a stunning place, and they've got the craft beer and they've got real top-notch food. Well, I was meant to be up here about two hours ago, but made the fatal mistake of going past the Yard of Dreams, which is Kilworth Machinery, and got chatting all about mowers and stuff. I may have committed to something. Both are bagging up this charcoal and then load up the two wheeler. But first of all, bagging up some charcoal. It's pretty boring. That has got most of it done. I think I might have a little touch of black on my face. Looks like I've been working on some sort of steam engine. Morning. We're at Nether Hall this morning. It's not actually Nether Hall itself, but it's called Nether Hall Wood, Wooden Trust Site. And it's what Hart would look after. They do some of the thinning management and wildlife surveys and that sort of thing. Just show you this. this I, walked, I walked the site with Kevin the other week and um, you see just there, there's a hazel that's still alive. Possibly two years growth now. And it's just like curled its toes up. And we weren't sure if it's like frost damage, but I've never seen frost damage on hazel. So I don't know whether that's um, the wet, because this is a particularly wet woodland. Unbelievably wet, in fact. It's just a little bit concerning and a bit surprising really, because hazel is usually quite resilient. I've just got to watch for ticks on my legs today. Put some cologne on. Done a double pass all the way around and there were some particularly wet bits that one especially and then it started raining and it's been raining for about two hours and to be quite honest I'm soaked so we're gonna pick up some charcoal from Kevin at Hartwood and then I think I'm gonna go home and get dry because I just feel cold and wet again Good morning. Little bit of a stunner this morning compared to yesterday's misery. Never mind, we've dried out thankfully. My first job this morning is to get the charcoal on the go. It's just about lunchtime. You can Possibly see the gases coming out. It's just puffing away. 
bit like a steam engine isn't it but that's the gases coming out of the barrel from the holes which are like uh, let me think I drill holes in the barrel like that so the gases come out of those holes and um, that's what you can see there those gases ignite and uh, it keeps the whole thing going uh, first barrels out next barrels in we've got quick temperature check we're on 510 ish um, it looks like I might have to shut this down anytime soon I've got to nip off to Kilworth to talk machinery and then go home for tea good afternoon I'm on the mad busy rush to get 25 bags loaded up for Michael that rubbed me tender in Litchfield Twenty-six in there. Whew, feels like I'm in a mad rush today. I've got to get over to Litchfield, which is about half an hour away, and drop these off. <clears throat> and I'm in a rush because I've got to get back to put my daughter up from school. So, hence the uh, out of breath. <laughs> if you've never yet been to rugby tender in Litchfield and the Trinity Brewery. They run from a uh, little industrial estate and they do incredible food. Get yourself down to Litchfield on a Thursday, a Friday and a Saturday top quality barbecue food. Good morning. I just thought I'd show you that willow screen I did at our woodland as an experiment. There's a couple of the tops that have failed. It's grown really well. I'm chuffed to bits with that. Surprisingly, I shut that down the other day and it wasn't even gassing. But there was a lot of heat in the bottom. And I've just gone to do a quick weight check because that's all I do is just to simply lift it to see whether it's converted or not. And it's converted, and I'm really surprised by that. It's like, that's awesome. Just while that charcoal's cooking away, I wanted to make a bit of a I'm just concentrate a minute. A bit of a cross cutting saw bench thing for firewood processing. So I've just picked up some scraps of wood I've got lying around and just want to try and do something with it. Test driving these saw horses today again and it makes it so much easier than trying to work on the floor in the mud. They're great. There's a wobble, so we could do with an opposite brace going that way. Try and stop. I've managed to find a couple of bits of old pallet wood, and I've used those for the cross bracing. And now that is a lot better, isn't it? Notches are done. We'll get this off and then we'll wait for some cross-cutting days and firewood days where we can test this beast out. So I've got these space so that in between these beams I'll go straight down there with my chainsaw and down there and that gives me a 10 inch log. And the reason I've done that at the back is so that I can load up maybe five or six logs all the way down cut through this one and then just keep rolling the next one down 
so I'm going to keep starting and stopping the saw too often I can maybe load up half a dozen logs and you get the picture checking the charcoal next because I've got a feeling this first barrel is about to finish gassing tomorrow I've got an event on at Cork Abbey with Hartwood that's all to do with charcoal they're going to run their retort all about the great big green wheat good morning it's just starting to rain again which is frustrating my plan today was meant to be topping a field but um, I've had to delay that till tomorrow because I've got to try and fix my brush cutter which I've not managed to fix yet I've got all the parts in last week we've got new fuel pipes we've got a carburetor kit well, here we go hang on just had a call from Tim Lander forestry contracting and um, sort of green space management and he wanted to pop up and talk all things two-wheelers he's just been to kill with machinery and bought himself some shiny new kit and he says oh while I'm so close can I just pop and say hello I was like yeah why not I don't often get many that was good Tim stayed for lunch had a good old natter about machines and forestry and all those sort of things. So if you live in the Shropshire borders of Wales, Shropshire, Telford, Northern Shropshire, I think he said, um, and want somebody to do your woodland management, then Tim's your man. Great bloke. Just as Tim's about to leave, this great big wagon comes up the lane, doesn't it? And of course, this wagon can't reverse. Tim couldn't reverse because he's got this 16 foot trailer on, trying to reverse that down the lane would have ended up in disaster. And trying to get a 16 foot trailer in our gateway was interesting to say the least. Anyway, Tim managed it. We managed to get the trailer in. We had to unhitch the trailer, get his truck out, swing it into the gateway, let the truck go past, reattach his, get his trailer, try and get back out the gateway again, which honestly is very difficult. <laughs> He's got himself a used flail from Kilworth. I'm not jealous, honest for his alpine tractor and he's also got himself a sickle bar mower for his two wheel tractor so we'll give that a good old blast with carb cleaner get it nice and clean with a rag and then we've got my carburetor repair kit that's better look nice rebuilt carburetor with all new diaphragms and gaskets and I'll look fire it up just to make sure it does actually still work by the way this is all Tim's fault if you're familiar with the channel you'll know that normally I run this green little two-wheel tractor with a green flail just here only Tim, who's just been up, he says that he gets on really well with this particular mower. So I popped into Kilworth Machinery last week and they said, you know what, we might just have one in the yard. Well, after much searching, they found this Zannon mower. It's more of a topper. It had only been used about half a dozen times. The top plate is missing, so I've got to create a cover for that ASAP, so nobody goes and sticks their fingers in it, or there's no accidents. But apart from that, they put a brand new shaft in there, because that was missing. And there we go, we've got a brand new topper. And I want to see how much quicker it is. It's also four inches wider cut. That's a little test run down here. And that's what I did the other day, that's what I've just done. I've got it on the highest set at the moment, so it's about set at about three or four inches high and actually I'm really keen and excited to get it going and see how well it does I 
things are going well so far. The new mower is performing really well. I was sort of hoping maybe I could get it into second gear, but there's not much chance on this field. We're going all right, we've just run out of fuel, but it's definitely quicker than the flail. So we could be breaking world records here. All done. And I think I'm about an hour ahead of last time, which is not bad at all. Overall verdict, although it's more difficult to turn on the ends, I don't lose grip as often because it oscillates, so it has a flexible joint in the middle, whereas the flail's fixed. So if the flail bottoms out, one of the wheel lifts off the ground, you'd lose traction. But that's a lot better. So back at home at the workshop, and it's prepping these timbers ready for making hazel hurdle frames again. And I think this could well be the last set of hurdles for this year. I've got quite a bit of hazel left. And it's a bit of a concern because it's always nice to be able to use your hazel up. But we're now mid-June. Oh, it's gone straight in my way that has. Now it's middle of June, and normally by about the end of June you want to have used up your hazel. You can sort of push it into early July, but it's getting too dry to use at that point. You start to snap a lot. You're trying to weave it, it just snaps. When you're trying to split it, it snaps. This year has been a really tricky, slow year. But yeah, people are holding back and um, all around I think people are just struggling to either find money or they're reluctant to spend money. And of course, buying a hurdle may not rank top of the list. So I'm very grateful for the people that have bought hurdles because that keeps me alive. But it's a shame that I can't use what I've got. Builders are noisy today. The new house is in the background over there. Oh, you know when you cut something and realise you just cut it off? That's wasted. Some more concentrate. Measure twice, cut one. It's the same. It's bad. Oh, that's epic. That'll do for them. I'll cut them in afterwards. So all I need to do now. Hey, hey, you alright, Darren? Yeah, I'm just talking to yourself. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> alright. Well, we'll do that as we get older. Yeah, we'll right. I've done this. I've already cut the wood wrong there already. What are you doing? Is this making a couple of stands? No, I've done them. It's um, hurdles. I make hazel hurdles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. See you in a bit. Managed to get them finished and next job is I've got to go and take my daughter to swimming. Good morning. What a crazy morning so far. It seems that somehow the ongoing bipolar situation with Karen, she's in bipolar relapse as I call it, where the depression is taking over. She's under the crisis team and they eventually scale back how often they visit but they've completely messed up with the medication and I have no idea what's going on yet. If you know about these things you'll know that um, especially with bipolar time is of the essence in trying to get things stabilised and we have just, we, they, us and them it's, it's gone completely wrong. Uh, I've been running around to the doctors and trying to get medication, around to the pharmacy, I've been running with the crisis team, uh, and I still have no answers for any of it yet. If any of you guys are undergoing or in the middle of a mental health crisis, it's, it's flipping miserable, honest. <laughs> It's exhausting for everyone, for the person that's ill, for the family that's trying to cope with it, uh, trying to get answers, uh, relying on people that somehow seem to seem to let you down. They promise the world, 
and then, and then days in you're like oh hang on a minute you've not done that and now I've got to pick up the pieces and I thought we'd got through this because this has happened multiple times to me over the years and I'm not knocking any individual it's the system that's broke they said no 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 not this time we're going to give you all the help we can and basically they've gone and done it to us again so we're on our own anyway rant over I just want to get it off my chest I've got to speak to somebody and then this afternoon we've got another meeting because somebody in the world still thinks that Karen's fit for work and because she doesn't work she hasn't worked for a few years now and they said no no you need she's fit for work and we're, like, we're trying to prove that she's not fit for work so he's having another assessment this afternoon while we're in the middle of a mental health crisis honestly you I could write a book it's insane what you have to go through stop ranting you idiot you don't get any better <laughs> So in all fairness, um, I think this will be the conclusion of this particular woodlog. If you've managed to get this far through this video, you want yourself a little bit of a medal really. In previous videos, I've done a one word Wednesday, which is all about mental health. I'm trying to evaluate what my one word for the week is. Frustrating, let down. If you've got a one word for the week, or maybe even two words for the week, because we'll allow you that, um, tap away in the comments and if you've got a percentage like Ollie Bloggs does on his agri-contractor um, my percentage for this week was okay we were at about 75 80 but after today I think we've nosedived down to about 60 so by all means let me know what your percentage is as well however I just want to say thanks for watching this particular woodlog if you're able to keep smiling See you on the next one.